This is an uh, introduction to CDN. CDN is an abbreviation for uh, Content Distribution Network, uh, or also called uh, Content Delivery Network. After this uh, seven minute uh, video tutorial uh, or introduction, you'll be able to answer questions like, what is a CDN? Why do, a, why do we need a CDN? And uh, what are the advantages of uh, using a CDN? We'll cover a lot of terms like, uh, what is a static content? What's a client? What's a server? What's a network of computers? So this would also help you understand uh, um, internet scale companies and how they serve huge amount of traffic. Uh, they have a lot of content that need that needs to be served. So okay, so let's move forward. So what is a CDN? CDN, simply put, is a collection of computers. Of thousands of thousands of computers they're located across the earth like you know they're all connected to the internet uh, in different countries you know so it's, it's just simply a network of computers it's like all of them ready to serve any request that comes in so it's just a collection of computers so then why do you need a CDN to understand why do you need a CDN <clears throat> you need to understand how a typical web page is constructed. So this is a client. A client is a browser uh, or it could be a mobile device uh, or it could be a you know any other um, computer connected to the internet. So this client when it says www.google.com on the browser then there's a server Google server listening uh, on you know configured to listen for any request that comes in for www.google.com and then it returns, you know, it does some computation and then returns uh, raw HTML. This raw HTML is sent back to the client. The client then has uh, an HTML which has a lot of links like uh, CSS, um, HTML, uh, no, not HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and images. So what happens is after it downloads the initial HTML, it makes another HTTP request uh, to get the CSS and then there could be multiple CSS files and so it makes those many multiple CSS requests and there could be you know similarly it makes multiple JavaScript requests uh, images and um, flash and a lot of such contents right so as you see there are so many requests going on for just one page www.google.com so now what happens typically in a small uh, you know company is um, it it serves everything from the central server so it serves the CSS it serves the JavaScript it serves the HTML it also serves the flash and images and everything so what happens is a single client has so many connections to the same server right so um, what so so there's a lot of things that can be optimized here as you see uh, for this server to be serving millions and millions of clients it would just run out of you know uh, bandwidth or it would run out of uh, capacity to serve so many clients even when you have you know thousands of servers so what happens is that's when CDN comes in so now when you know how the web page is constructed it has you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, flash and all of these so all of these are called static content content that doesn't change is static so CSS, uh, the cascading style sheets, the JavaScript, uh, images, and things like that. They can change, but when they change, they have a new name. So they're basically changed. So they remain static over you know, a long period of time, rather than dynamic content. So, so that's when CDN comes in. A CDN basically helps uh, remove all of those traffic uh, and then it takes takes over the load of all the CSS images and JavaScript that this original server was serving and then frees up a lot of bandwidth to serve more dynamic stuff. So what happens is Google.com then, uh, or any internet, this is just an example of Google.com, any internet scale company like uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, or you know, bigger companies, uh, they what they do is they, they serve dynamic content, that's user-generated content, in an HTML and the links to CSS, JavaScript, and images are, you know, are redirected towards uh, a CDN provider. So they configure a CDN to serve all of their static content that, and it frees them uh, from serving 
um, all of those extra requests. So there are multiple advantages of doing this. First of all, CDN, as we discussed, is a collection of computers uh, spread across the earth. So a browser, you know, coming from um, Brazil would get to the closest network of computers uh, in Brazil for the CDN resources, and then it will get all of its static content from, you know, the closest location um, of that CDN machine. Uh, rather than going all the way to the US server or things like that. So first of all, it, it gets all of these contents from um, machines that are closely located, geolocated. So all of the static contents first is diverted to a CDN. Second, um, it's it's closer to the to the client because these machines are um, across the across the earth in, in various continents and things like that. And uh, so there are many more, um, you know, advantages. So first of all, the bandwidth is, you know, you, Google.com now can have more bandwidth free. Uh, CDN takes in a uh, lot of uh, uh, CDN takes in a lot of the load of all the static content, and uh, you can also have failover just in case there's a denial of service attacks. You could have multiple CDN networks configured to serve the same uh, static content if uh, if you know this CDN has been attacked so so there are a lot of advantages of uh, doing this um, so there are some there's one major advantage one another advantage is uh, the warm cache let's say you have a big feature coming out right um, and all the browsers don't have those new static content static JavaScript and things like that so what happens is uh, CDN helps to to warm the cache uh, earlier when you can, you know, pro when you are using, when you are A-B testing your feature, all of those static contents are, you know, cached at the CDN level. So all of those resources uh, are available uh, um, for the clients for the new feature. So you don't see a huge cache miss um, on your CDN when a new feature comes out. Uh, but there's one uh, thing that we need to be careful about when you use a CDN is uh, your static content needs to be uh, versioned, meaning let's say you change the static content. You don't want your browsers to um, use that old um, CSS and JavaScript. So what you do is on your server, you uh, version all of these content and then you deploy it to the CDN and, and then it caches it. So every time you change the link, this has a cache miss and then it requests for the static content from the server and then returns it back to the client. So this gives you a brief overview of how a collection of computers um, across the earth helps you to serve static content, the content that doesn't change, and then reduces the load um, on the main site, which is, which is already serving a huge number of connections, um, and then frees up the resources. So there are a lot of CDN providers, like there are huge companies like Akamai, Edgecast, China Cash, and so many such companies which have their own thousands and thousands of computers across the earth configured and connected to the network to serve um, content. So uh, that is what a CDN network is. 